the reading for today is from Matthew 3, 1 to 17. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight path for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt round his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come in to where he had been baptized, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with the water of repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His willowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray, that in all things we may know you and love you and seek you. Today, open up the word of God to us, Lord, that we can really hear all that you need to say to us. And may we go from this place different. Amen. So we're going to continue today with our series on Matthew. And uh, I have to say, I looked at this and thought, we've already done an awful lot about the baptism of Jesus just before Christmas. Uh, well, Jesus about John, didn't we, the Baptist? But we are going to go down the John the Baptist line again because that's where it is in Matthew at the moment. Um, so we have here the baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist, the prophet, is called to herald the way of the Messiah. And John conceived, was conceived as a miracle baby to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was too old to conceive or considered too old, and yet this was another miracle baby where Jesus had made the impossible happen. John brought the message of repentance. That means to turn away from um, all the things that are, are against God, to turn away and go God's way, to turn away from our rejection of God and go towards God, to go towards God's goodness. It means to turn around, to go the other way, so that's what this is about. He's saying, come the way of the Lord. Follow the Messiah. John knew this was the season of the Messiah. The kingdom was coming. The kingdom was here. He knew that. He's proclaiming this. John coming from the wilderness, the desert, um, which is known in the Old Testament as a place of new beginnings often. So you look at the desert. You think this is a place of new beginnings. It kind of fits with baptism, doesn't it, when he says repent go the other way, you can have a new beginning. Amazing. Even his clothes marked him as the second Elijah, the prophet that was spoken of in Kings. It was said that there would be a prophet that would come, would be a forerunner to the Messiah. But Israel, once again, as always, was not living as it should. His words here indicate that being a Jew wasn't enough alone, okay? There needs to be heart action as well. 
You know, we can say, it's that old saying I keep saying, isn't it? Going to McDonald's doesn't make you a burger. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian, does it? It's true. And baptism was a way of marking the people out <clears throat> as those who were now the real believers, the ones that had really turned to God, the ones that had gone away from law and were seeking grace, the ones who were giving their heart to God and saying, I want to live your way. Turning towards God, not away from God. Now, the mission of John and the mission of Jesus rather overlap. In Isaiah 43, it says, um, um, it prophesied that John was the fourth runner, not the destination. It reads like this, okay? A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That was in Isaiah 40. So you see how the Old Testament is already telling us this is going to happen. John is going to come. This is going to happen. John is an example of humility. He's an example of hope. All of us mess up, and God gives us a way out. Giving our mess to Jesus releases us to live a new life. John challenges the religious men of the time as well, and uh, he saw their sin, their wrongdoing, their pious behavior, their lack of grace, their lack of love, and he challenges it. They made, you see, the people at the time made things harder for the people, actually. They wanted power. They wanted control over the people. They would actually make the laws tougher to keep them down, to keep them in the place that they wanted them. So that's the kind of thing they would do. It would go, I'm going to make it harder for you to become you know, a believer. I'm going to make it harder to live the life. And we're going to keep you where we want you. John, John here, the herald, makes it clear that we cannot save ourselves. We cannot self, save ourselves. Um, and it's only the coming Messiah that can do this. So John led people to the water to indicate a new beginning. A new beginning. But Jesus puts the water of life in us so we can live that life, okay? Through the Spirit of God. Jesus makes a new way, one that will lead us to a new heaven, a new earth, where God lives forever and ever. Isaiah 42 says these words, Here is my servant who I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. This is the promise of God, a promise that John knew very well and was expecting the Messiah. The next part of the scripture leads us into the, to the, Jesus being baptized, and that is mark, the mark of the start of his very public ministry, okay? So this is the moment. This is all about beginnings, isn't it? This is the beginning, actually, of Jesus' journey to the cross. This is a fulfillment of Isaiah's promises. Here we have the proof that this Messiah spoken of by John is the Messiah. Jesus is who he is proclaiming to be. The Word is Jesus. If you read John 1, it talks about the Word, doesn't it? The Word has come into the world, the light. The Word is Jesus. He is eternal. He is the perfect and expected one. He comes to John the Baptist at this point the forerunner, and he lays his own self down to be baptized by one who is imperfect, the perfect meeting imperfect. Such humility, Jesus has such humility, the word meets the spirit, and the spirit descends down like a dove upon him. Beautiful picture, isn't it, of God's acceptance and love for us. The father says, I love my son. I am well pleased with him. And in this, of course, we will see the Trinitarian God in action and very present. The Son in flesh, Jesus Christ. The Father speaking, the Spirit descending on Jesus. All God, all equal. There we have it, the Trinity. Stuck there in those scriptures. Reminding us how powerful God is. And do you notice that before Jesus even starts his earthly ministry, before he does anything, before he completes his mission on the cross, 
what does the father do? He affirms his son. He doesn't condemn him. He affirms him. What does he say? This is my son whom I am well pleased. What does that say to us today about who we are? What our mission is on earth as children of God, as loved by this eternal God, filled and equipped by the Spirit? Well, firstly, we are called to be disciples, okay? That is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and secondly, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I'm going to do my second bit of my sermon in a minute because I want to just take a second now to give you either, either on your own or in with the people around you or I'm just look at people and just have a few minutes discussion. What does it mean to you to be a disciple? What does it mean to you to be a disciple? So take a few minutes and just have a chat. Right, I'm gonna Right, I'm gonna call you back now. I just want to give a few minutes for you just to think about that. Um what does it mean to be a disciple? That's first and forth our calling is to be a disciple. To be a disciple, we must understand that we cannot earn the love of God, first of all, okay? You cannot earn the love of God. In our practice and way of lifting, it seems to me often we try and earn God's love without realizing it even. God loves us. He died on the cross. He rose again so that we could know him. It's not about that. It's about allowing God into our life, Holy Spirit into our life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The requirement to love our God starts with us actually being loved first by God. So before anything else, first and foremost, it's accepting that love of God on the cross where he died and rose again for us. I am just loved by God. I was created out of God's love because God is love. So were you. You were created out of love, God's love, because God loves you. We can't earn that. It just is as it is. Service and work will not get us to know God more. God loves you, and that's it. Before you do anything, God loves loves you that's it if you go away with anything else today just know that you are first and foremost loved by god that's shown in the scriptures jesus is received by the father before he did anything in his ministry this is my son whom i'm well pleased we are called to spend time with god father son and holy spirit being loved first of all and consumed by the presence of god that's what changes us that's what makes us live the life. That's what really, really makes a difference in our lives. The presence of God in our lives, through our lives. And as the presence of God meets with us, we are then prepared to go and show that love to others that we see in the world. It makes a difference then to how we act and who we are and how we serve. But it starts with that place of relationship with the living God. It's then that we will go into our world that we live in, reaching out to the broken, the excluded, those who don't know they are loved, the addicted, those who have no self-worth, those who don't know who they are. That's what we're called to do, is draw, draw people to the kingdom, not further away from the kingdom. So this was the start of Jesus' ministry, a declaration of his perfect submission to the mission on the cross by accepting baptism from someone who was imperfect. This is the greatest act of love. We are to understand before we do anything, we are first created and loved just as we are. Okay? We are created and loved just as we are. Living a life turned to Jesus 
giving God our sin, our wrongdoing, giving him those things that we struggle with, whatever it is that you struggle with, we all have things we struggle with, self-indulgence, sexual sin, hard-heartedness, gossiping, hate, violence, lying, theft, anything. We start struggle with so many things, don't we? All of us do. We will battle with certain things. But we turn to Jesus, the Holy Spirit helps us to live differently. When we are honest and when we hand over our rubbish, Jesus helps us to live differently. We will not be perfect on this earth. I hate to tell you, none of us are going to be perfect on this earth. I will never be perfect. Oh, get over it, okay? But we will never be perfect on this earth. But we can allow God to love us in our imperfection. And that's where the change comes from inside out, not the other way around. When we turn to him, not away from him. When we turn to our God, not away from our God. So often we do things the wrong way around. Do you seek affirmation from God through good works or being good even? Because it doesn't work. It's exhausting, isn't it? Or are you driven by the knowledge that you are loved first and out of that comes your love for others, your love for God, your works and the goodness that you do because of him? The first is exhausting, like I say, because we end up doing it in our own strength. It becomes law rather than grace it isn't real change by the spirit it isn't freedom by the spirit so today think where in your life do you allow god to say i love you where do you allow god when do you spend time with the father son and holy spirit just to allow god to say i love you to allow the spirit like the dove to descend on your life where do you meet with Jesus in your flesh? Where are you transparent? Where are you honest with God? I want just to encourage you today to lay down those things that hold you back. To stop striving, first of all. To stop striving. To just be loved. To just be accepted. To love the community around you because do you know what God does? God does. To let the Spirit fill you to know God is pleased with you, just as you are. Because firstly, God loves you. I call on you to seek his presence first and allow God, Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to change you from the inside out. And I urge you to give Jesus permission to change your life. It's a wonderful prayer, isn't it? Change my life, Lord. What would that look like for you? Change me, Lord. Make me, Lord, more as I should be. Let your spirit work in me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit now just minister across us. Fill us to overflowing. And Lord, I just pray now that we're able to lay down anything there where we have strived to earn our place. Help us, Lord, to accept your love. May the God of love fill you with the presence of his spirit now to change you from the inside out. Lay down anything that's in the way. Accept the grace of God. Accept God's mercy. Accept God's love. And allow the Holy Spirit now to change you and me, the church, from the inside out. I'm going to encourage the worship band now to come up. And I just encourage you to stand if you can as we move into this time of worship again. If you can stand, please. Thank you. If you can, if you can't, that's fine. And as they get ready to move us into worship, I'm just going to suggest them. Um, we just, I'm just going to say those words over you. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, point out the all of love as my worship to you. In response to God's love, 
allow the power of the Holy Spirit now to fill you. Offer your life to the living God. Offer your life. As you worship now, offer your life and allow the Holy Spirit to change you, to change me, to change our nation, to change our world. God is King of King, Lord of Lords, God Almighty. Come, Holy Spirit.